Hello everybody, it's Sanyo, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about why CRISPR Therapeutics has a 10x lead over the next CRISPR company in line for most patients' dose. I want to talk about all of that in this video and stir up a discussion. Now, before we do that, before we jump into today's video, you guys know the drill. You guys know exactly what to do. Uh, like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button. If you've not subscribed yet, do subscribe. Hit that notification bell for our videos to get to you faster. So I want to make a quick video today. Um, CRISPR Therapeutics worth under $5 billion market cap, which is mind boggling, right? I find that really crazy that if you had asked me in early 2021 that we'd be, you know, three, four, almost four months into 2022 and CRISPR Therapeutics would be under $5 billion, I wouldn't believe you. I wouldn't believe you. Unfortunately, due to the uncertainty with markets that started way before the Ukraine-Russia situation, obviously with Fed rates, inflation, the whole bear market in biotech, and just other reasons as well, right? Other reasons, uncertainty in politics, the whole failure with U.S. government, with the bill, BBB plan from uh, the, the Democrats, you know, the, the Build Back Better plan or whatever it's called these days, uh, that failed. So lots of reasons, right? But obviously today it's all about the Russia and Ukraine situation and CRISPR therapeutics or any CRISPR company in the biotech space um, would not be immune to any of those macro situations. So clearly it's much more than just the biotech slash CRISPR companies. Uh, it's a lot more bigger than that, what's going on in the markets. But I do find it crazy that it's still under $5 billion. I think there are great opportunities right now to invest, whether that's with CRISPR companies, whether that's with specific genomics companies, or just the biotech as a whole, right, the whole sector. I think there's a lot of opportunities, but again, not financial advice. You guys do your own research and do your own decisions. So I wanted to talk about CRISPR Therapeutics, a video I made actually um, I think mid-February, yeah, February 19, I made this video and I'm just going to play this clip here and we'll jump into my thoughts really quickly. So those are the four franchises that made tremendous progress. Uh, we've dosed uh, over 150 patients to date as a company. Uh so clearly here, this was mid-February, CRISPR Therapeutic CEO, Dr. Sam mentioned that they have dosed over 150 patients to date. 150 patients to date. If we make a rough calculation and I can pull up the the corporate presentation from CRISPR Therapeutics, but basically you have CTA001, that Vertex latest earnings actually released that they've dosed over 70 patients. You, we know that CTX110 for CAR T cells uh, is programmed to have 30 patients dosed. So full 30 patients there, 70 patients from CTX001, so that's 100 patients. So now you have 50 patients between CTX120, CTX130, again, all those programs, CTX110, 120, 130 are all CAR T cells programs, basically can cancer cells and everything around that. Um, and then you have another program with type one diabetes. I believe that only has one patient. Maybe they increased it to a couple now at this point that we're expecting data very, very quickly from uh, Viacite and CRISPR Therapeutics. But basically, the storyline here is that CRISPR Therapeutics, the company, has dosed over 150 patients. Let's just say 150 patients, right? And we know from NTLA, NTLA phase one data from NTLA 2001, they've actually dosed 15 patients. And it's not even 15 patients with full dosage as they expect. In fact, they're going to go with phase two, phase two with a 80 milligram of dosage, right? And they... On for the 15 total that they dose, actually some of those patients were very minimal dose that's not going to be really relevant at this point, but still they've dosed 15 patients. So if we do a quick math here, CRISPR therapeutics 150 patients, NTLA 115 patients, so that's a 10x, right? Beam therapeutics has a zero patient dose. Caribou Biosciences has one patient dose, as far as we know, that was uh, midsummer last year. They probably increased it to two, three, four patients at this point. Um, there is, what else? Verb Therapeutics, zero. Graph Bio, zero. Um, Editas, they have obviously a couple of patients, but honestly, to be honest with you, and 
Again, I respect shareholders of Editas, but I don't think it's relevant at this point with everything that's happening with this company. I'm not even going to mention them at this point, but clearly they have under 15 patients, those at least for relevant programs or what we're most concerned for. So really, you know, there's not much, uh, like besides CRISPR therapeutics, 150 patients, NTLA with 15 patients, and Caribou Biosciences with a couple of patients here and there uh, that we're still waiting data for. We don't really have any programs from any of these CRISPR companies with patients dose. So what does that tell us, right? What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that CRISPR therapeutics is currently leading the space by at least 10x when it comes to patient dose. Now, the first criticism I get, and you know, I've heard this being repeated literally like every single hour of the day, is that, well, CRISPR therapy doesn't hold the best tech. And I totally agree with that, right? I totally agree with that. If you just look at the technology, they clearly do not hold the best technology, but they clearly do hold the title for most patients' dose. And ultimately, if you can get more patient dose, if you can further your program for FDA approval, which we believe CTX-001 will be FDA approved, then to me, you're the leader of this space. In my opinion, you are leading this space. In my opinion, this, this space is all about who gets the first FDA approval, in my opinion. Because the moment you get FDA approval, you're going commercial, you generate revenues, and then ultimately you get partnerships in. But you can always take the beam therapeutic side of things where you don't aim necessarily for FDA approval, you aim to prove that your technology, in this case, for beam therapeutic based editors, have, is the best technology. And then you establish those partnerships with Pfizer, for example, right? Or you can be like Biomod Biosciences, or you can be like NTLA that, you know, says, you know what, we're going to look at in vivo, we're going to dose them, we're going to get it done, and we're going to get the job done, and we're going to get potentially FDA approved while getting all these partnerships set up. Different ways to skin the cat, right? Different ways. Actually, I shouldn't say that because I got cr criticism last time, so about some, uh, some uh, animal... Uh, um, ethics uh, individual that sort of uh, told me not to say that. So I will go back to my words and I'm not going to say that, but there's different ways to tread a needle, right? So hopefully you guys appreciate this video. Like this video if you found value, destroy the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and let me know in the comments below, does CRISPR therapeutics, is CRISPR therapeutics the leader of the space by 10x? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching.